by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> On time, too. What's this dude we're meeting look like, anyway? Well, like any other 20-year-old, I guess, Chester. He's lived back in Philadelphia since he was five, since his ma and Cleve busted up. Well, I guess we'll recognize him all right. Oh, well, Matt. <laughs> Chester. Oh, hello, hello, Doc. What are you doing down here? Oh, just looking over the new arrivals, seeing how many unhealthy ones I can count on. <laughs> Good gracious sake, will you look at that? Uh, look at what? Uh, that right there. Oh, oh, my. Well, if that isn't a blossom of blooming youth. I think that's the boy we're supposed to meet. Him? That's old man Cleveland's son, Cleveland. Matt, you mean that swaggering old roughneck's got a son who dresses like that? Now you can't always tell by appearances, Doc. Uh, hey, Tom! He's sure giving the depot loafer something to choke up already. <laughs> yes, sir? Hey, you are Tom Cleveland, aren't you? Yes, sir, I am. I'm Matt Dillon, I'm Marshal here in Dodge. Pleasure, Marshal Dillon. Uh, your dad couldn't get in today, and he asked me to meet you and get you started out to the ranch. Uh, it's very kind of you, Marshal. This is all new to me. Yeah, uh, well, hey, you'll get used to it. I hope so, but... Right now, everyone seems to be amused at something. Well, the uh, boys around here aren't much used to such style, I guess. In Philadelphia, they told me this was the correct Western attire. Well, it's not quite. Uh, at any rate, your father left a saddle horse for you at the livery stable. Uh, saddle horse? Ah. Uh, oh, uh, well, um, isn't there any means of uh, public conveyance? Well, I'm afraid we don't have any public conveyances in the Dodge, Tom. Huh? But I don't ride too well, except on a flat saddle. A flat saddle? <laughs> I never heard of such a thing. Oh, uh, this is Chester Proudfoot, uh, Tom Cleveland. Uh, how do you do, sir? How do you It's my... Your daddy sure going to have himself a chore with you. <laughs> uh, Chester. You know, uh, it's strange having a father after all these years. What sort of a man is he, Marshal? Your dad? No, he's... I guess he's just an ordinary frontier cattleman. Well, I guess we'll get on all right. Yeah, well, I hope you will, Tom. <laughs> Now, watch this, Matt. You ready, Tom? Anytime, Dad. He's fast, Matt. He's a lot faster than I was at his age. That's so. Gun in your holster, son, and eyes shut till the bottle's in there. All right. Draw! <laughs> Did you see it, Matt? You see it? Yeah, it's good shooting, Tom. Thank you, sir. Gets four out of five of them every time, right out there. Another month, and I'll be hitting five out of five. I don't doubt it. Well, Cleve, uh, I better be getting on into town. 
Nice to see you again, Marshal. Same here, Tom. Me and my boy have been working like this, Matt, three, four hours a day for pretty near two months now. He's a born gun handler. Yeah, he's that all right. When he come here and I heard how they laughed at him, Matt, I decided I was going to make a man under that boy if it killed me. Now, the idea is good, Cleve, that there's more to it than gunslinging. You can make a good shot in two months, but it takes longer to turn a boy into a man. Well, maybe. But he'll be treated like one, same as I've always been treated. I've stood up to the best of them, Matt. You know that. Uh-huh. Like that time in Tascosa when I outdrawed the Waco kid. Yeah, he I was know, the Cleve, but hmm? times are changing. The law's here now, and the law asks questions. So, uh, just don't push him too fast, huh? Give him a chance to find something. Find what? I'm not real sure, Cleve, but I know one thing. He's not going to find it in a pistol holster. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Today, all over the country, more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. And it's all because only L&M gives you full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Nice night, Mr. Dillon. Cold and clear as a cake of ice. Yeah, it's going to be a little frosty before morning. I can remember nights like this back in Texas. With the air so gall down sharp, you could hear a church bell ten miles away. Uh-huh. A lot of time you ever spent listening to church bells, Chester. Well, I could have heard them. If I'd have been a mind to it. Uh-huh. Well, in fact, there's Miss Kitty across the street. Huh? If you don't put a wrap on, she's going to catch her death. Come on, Chester. Mr. Cleveland? That's the trouble, Kitty. Oh, Matt. Thank heaven, I'm trying to find Mr. Cleveland. Was something wrong? Yeah, he's got to get that boy of his out of the Long Branch. He brought him in earlier and then left him there, and Tom's been drinking too much. Nah, that's Cleve's way of making a man out of him. Well, they better make him a quieter one who won't live long enough to be a man. What's going on? The boy's talking too much. Cleve started it himself, bragging all over the place. You know how he is. Yeah, I know. Well, after you left, the boys took it up and kept prodding Tom until... Well, he's just asking for trouble, Matt. Somebody's got to get him out of there. Well, they're just having a little fun, Kitty. It won't come to anything. Matt, you don't know who the kid's up against. Brawley Star's in there. Brawley Star? Tom's already got him pretty riled, and Brawley's not one to take it long. <laughs> Matt? Stay here, Kitty. <laughs> Side, please. Let me through here, will you? Beat you to it this time, Matt. How bad is he, Doc? Just a bullet in the arm. Doesn't amount to much. How do you feel, Tom? Sick, Marshal. Ah, oh, yeah. Let's get over there under the lamp, son. We'll jerk that bullet out and have you fixed up in no time at all. How'd it happen, boy? Who did it? I reckon I'm the guilty party, Marshal. Well, I didn't know you were in town, probably. I just got here this afternoon. Doesn't take you long, does it? Marshal Dillon, I... 
I, I hope you won't take any official action in this. It was a fair draw. You better go on over there and let Doc dig that bullet out, Tom. Come on, boy. It was just an argument, Marshal. He, he outdrew me. Doc's waiting for you. Yes, sir. You're picking kind of easy game, aren't you, Brawley? He picked. I didn't. Got business in Dodge, have you? Maybe. I ain't been here long enough to tell. He's just a half-baked kid, Brawley. Man's got a gun on his hip. He ain't a kid. You saw he was on the prod. You ought to have known enough to give him room. Most folks give me room, Marshal. And I didn't have to shoot him in the arm, you know. No, you didn't. Tom? Tom, you all right? It's nothing, Dad. Who done it, boy? Who done it? Who's a dirty right shot you in the back? He's kind of mouthy, ain't he? That's a boy's father. Mac? Mac? Where is this sneak that caught my boy with his back turned? I shot him, mister, and his back wasn't turned. You're a filthy liar. All right, hold it, both of you. Now talk soft and keep your hands on the bar. You'll answer to me for this. And you won't be facing up to no half-grown kid. All right, mister. Let's say 11 o'clock in the morning. I'll wait for you at the livery stable. Good enough. Just ask for Brawley Star. Brawley Star? Good night, Marshal. See you in the morning, mister. What? What have I done, man? Well, I'd say you got yourself in about as much trouble as you can handle, Queen. Maybe more than you can handle. <laughs> Happy Holidays from L&M. And here's how to say it to your friends. Give modern. Give L&M holiday cartons. L&M holiday cartons are gay, handsome. A gift that says both you and your friends know how to... Live modern. Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Remember, when you smoke L&M, you always get full, exciting flavor through the L&M Miracle Tip. L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. That's why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. So smoke L&M, and remember, your friends appreciate your gift of L&M holiday cartons. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. I know, Chester. Uh, will you turn that stove damper down? Huh? It's getting kind of hot in here. You just going to sit here? Yeah, I guess so. But Brawley Star will kill him. Chester, the one thing the law can't do is keep a fool from being a fool. Well, I know, but... Brawley's all up there at the stable, leaning on the hitching rail, minding his own business. I got no reason to bother him. If Cleve jumps him, it'll be self-defense, and I still got no reason. Yeah, but maybe Cleve won't go off first. He will. Well, he'll make sure of that. Oh, good morning, Kitty. Oh, Miss Kitty? Matt, I seem to be making a habit of running to you about the Clevelands. Yeah, you and Chester both. What's wrong now? What's well, the old man, Cleve. He's sitting over there in the long branch drinking. Been at it for two hours. Oh? I didn't even know he was in town yet. Matt, he acts sort of crazy. Will you come talk to him at least? Yeah, sure, Kitty. (laughs) 
Morning, Cleve. What are you doing here? Mind if I sit up? All right, if you want to. Thanks. Well, looks like you've taken on a fair-sized load there. What's the difference? It's a bad state to be in for a man about to walk into a gun. I'm all right. Don't worry none about me. Brawley is fast, Cleve, as fast as they come. You've got a lot of nerve to give him even better odds by getting yourself drunk. It's my once. business, ain't it? Of course, the man that faced down the Waco kid doesn't have much to worry about, I guess. Huh? No, we... Except man. that Brawley's the man who killed the kid a few years later in El Paso. You know, you're a fool, Cleve. Why didn't you stay home this morning? I had to come. They laughed at me. Cleve, you've never even seen the Waco kid or any of the others you brag about. No. You've never been in a gunfight in your life. That you? ain't true. It is true, and you know it. As long as it stayed just harmless talk, it didn't matter much, but you started filling your boy full of it, trying to make him into something you never were. And last night you nearly got him killed by it. Oh, boy's got to know how to take care of himself. Taking care of himself's one thing, mouthing off till he gets a bullet through his arms, another. It could just as well have been his heart. Brawley let him off easy. And now you're going up there and get yourself killed. <laughs> no, I ain't. I, I, I can't do it. I'm trying to drink myself up to it. And I can't. Matt, I'm a coward. Uh, forget it, Cleve. Every man runs into somebody who can put the Indian sign on him. What's the boy? Kitty? Yeah, ma'am. Take care of him, will you? Get him upstairs. It's something you can do a whole lot better than I can. Yeah, sure. John. Yeah, Chester. You better come quick. Now, what is it? Tom's out there in the street. He's wearing a gun, and he's headed for the livery stable. All right, let's go. Kid must be out of his head. There he is. Tom. Tom Cleveland. Yes, sir. Hold up a minute, will you? Where are you going, Tom? You know where I'm going, Marshal. It's my fight. I started it. Dad didn't. I don't know who started it, but I know who's going to stop it. Take his gun, Chester. Now, wait. Shut up. Now, you stay here and don't move. Chester, if he tries to get away, put a bullet through his other arm. I'll be happy to. Well, now, I wasn't exactly looking to see you this morning, Marshal. You ain't here to stand up for somebody else, are you? Just standing up for the law, Broadway. Well, to my knowing, there ain't no law been broke. Call it law and order, then. And a gunfight's not very orderly. Well, I sure don't aim to do no shooting less than somebody shoots at me first. Nobody's gone to, Broadway. Cleveland's not going to show. Oh? <laughs> kind of had a feeling he wouldn't. You looked a little crawly last night. Just a uh, big wind, no rain. Hmm? His boy feels different, though. I just stopped him up the street there. He was heading down here to face you. Well, I'll say one thing. The yearling ain't got much sense, but he's sure full of vinegar. He's a good kid, Brawley, in spite of what his dad's done to him. I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. You won't, as long as he stays shy of me. Now, there's one way to make sure of that. You got a horse there in the stable. Get it and ride. The law say that, Marshal. I said it, Brawley. You really run your town, don't you? All right, Marshal, I got no reason to stay. I'll ride. Good. So long, Brawley. Yeah, I'll be seeing you, Marshal. You 
had me worried stiff, Mr. Dillon. What happened, anyhow? Nothing much. Tom, Brawley's riding out of town. And you better get on back out to the ranch. I have to find my father first. He's in town somewhere. He'll be out later, Tom. He's drunk, isn't he? Well, I... It's all right, Marshal. I understand him rather well, I think. He's something of a braggart and a liar. And most likely a coward. Now, wait a minute, Tom. Oh, don't Tom. worry. I, I'll never let him find out I know. After all... He's my father. Well, then maybe you can help him grow up, huh? Maybe you can make a man out of him. I hope so, sir. <laughs> you know something, Tom? I think you will. <laughs> Our star, William Conrad. In 1900, 20 miles an hour very often was excessive speed. But in 1900, as now, speed is a relative concept. It's relative, for instance, to traffic conditions. An empty highway is safer than a crowded one. It's relative to the time of day. Dusk, dawn, and night driving is more hazardous than daylight. It's relative to weather conditions. Rain, sleet, and snow mean slow down, even on highways that are posted for high maximum speed limits. In other words, safe speed is a question of driver's judgment. Police patrols can pick up a few of the most careless drivers, but the policeman that counts the most is the one you carry in your own head. When he tells you to slow down and stop taking chances, listen to him. The life you save may be your own. This has been a CBS Radio public service announcement. And now, William Conrad. You know, on the frontier, if a girl was looking for a husband, they used to say, she's throwing a mighty wide loop. Well, next week, a girl catches a husband right enough, but not the one she wants. And that was the West. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Sam Edwards, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.